והמרצה הראשון של הססיה הראשונה של האחרי הצהריים הוא פרופסור אהוד גזית שהוא המנהל האקדמי של המרכז BCDD והוא ירחיב לנו את האופקים בנושא מטאבולית המילואיד ואני נותנת לך את הבמה. So I'll switch to French. Excuse me. No, 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 it's fine. So, you know, I have three languages running in my brain, and sometimes I'm not aware of what I'm saying. So I will uh, repeat what I try to say. I would like to introduce uh, Professor Ehud Gazit, who is the head, uh, the academic director of the BCDD uh, Center, and I hope he will uh, give us, uh, broaden our uh, look about metabolic uh, amyloid. Thank you very much. That's fine. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. I, I wouldn't thank the, well, thank the organizer for uh, <laughs> inviting me. Uh, Many of you know me on my work on uh, the work of the group on nanotechnology, but we got to rare disease by serendipity, as you will see, but I think that it's now became quite central activity in our group. So, I mean, for this audience, I should not present how complex is metabolic uh, pathway map. And uh, it's wonder that uh, things are working in, in advanced organisms uh, like humans, but many times homozygous or X chromosome le uh, lack of enzymatic activity due to uh, 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 genetic inheritance leads to inborn error of metabolism disorder. One of the, uh, uh, the many of the rare diseases that belong to this group of diseases. Uh, the two uh, uh, major outcomes are either deficiency in products of this enzymatic activity or accumulation of substrates. Uh, for example, in phenylketonuria, which I will mention later, uh, the concentration of phenylalanine, if not treated by very strict diet, can reach a, a, a millimolar concentration, while the normal concentration of phenylalanine is in the micromolar range. So we have three orders of magnitude increase in the concentration of the, uh, of the metabolite. Uh, and the outcome of such uh, uh, metabolite concentrations is not fully understood. So how do we get to uh, a study uh, a metabolite uh, 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 and uh, self-assembly and, and its uh, uh, formation of ordered structures? Uh, so our group has been involved for many years trying to identify minimal recognition modules that allow the formation of ordered structures. Uh, we're interested in ways that biomolecules interact by a process of uh, uh, recognition, molecular recognition and self-assembly to form ordered nanostructures. Uh, our approach is reductionist. We take complex biological questions, biological molecules. We cut it to smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller uh, uh, pieces in a, a, a minimalistic a non-biased way, and uh, we identified actually extremely short self-associating motif, including metabolites, uh, uh, which will be the center of uh, uh, the presentation today, uh, as well as other uh, small molecules. When you get the formation of nanostructure for such small uh, uh, assemblies, there's also appearance of unique physical properties, including mechanical one, optical one, electronic one. Uh, this is really a, a, a field of research in, in, uh, uh, that is very new and not fully understood. Uh, I dare to say, although I'm recorded at uh, a friendly audience, that we think now that it might be that even these physical properties has to do with phenomena a, a pathological phenomena that we see with a, a, a 
the aggregation of metabolites and other uh, uh, small molecules. Sometimes uh, uh, metabolite self-assembly actually can bring to very uh, interesting phenomena that is important for physiology. Uh, it, this is, uh, I will speak about aggregation of uh, uh, nucleotides, but nature many times uses uh, uh, nucleotide self-assembly to form very interesting structure, like we study a lot of uh, uh, recently guanine self-assembly, and which forms physical color in fish, the ability of chameleon to change its, uh, its colors, reflectors in reptile eyes, and also in the molecular level, the formation of G4 quadruplexes. So we have a very fine a, a balance between the utilization of biological system for the physiological self-assembly of small metabolites to form functional studies, and in these cases in which the balance is being uh, uh, changed due to enzymatic uh, uh, inactivity or uh, uh, some uh, enzymatic deficiency, we can lead to pathological states. Our study of self of pathological cases of uh, uh, self-assembly started with our interest in amyloid formation. Uh, amyloid formation is associated with major human diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, also, which are very common, as, as all of you know, also with uh, uh, some rare disease like ALS and others. And in all these cases, there's the formation of toxic nanoassemblies uh, that are uh, uh, formed of peptides or proteins. Uh, which cause uh, uh, apoptotic cell death in different organs and tissue, so, for example, in, in uh, Alzheimer's disease, in uh, areas in the brain that are uh, uh, related to uh, uh, memory, in the case of Parkinson's disease, areas of the brain that are related to motoric activity. Uh, the mechanism of uh, um, toxicity is not fully understood, uh, there are more and more indications that uh, uh, amyloid fibers uh, can bind cellular membranes and induce uh, membrane destabilization. Uh, the, these amyloid structures have typical X-ray and electron fiber diffraction patterns. They are very old structure. You could see the, the uh, uh, X-ray diffraction, which means that there's formation of ordered assembly. Uh, actually, in, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, due to the uh, uh, assembly of the structures into beta sheet secondary structures. They bind specific dyes, including Congo red and THT. Uh, and a very interesting point is the fact that it's kind of a generic phenomena. Uh, uh, fibers from different origin, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, type 2 diabetes, uh, ALS, and others show remarkable physical properties, those that I mentioned, as well as others. Uh, my main talk today will be on the, on the metabolite amyloid, but so I will be very brief to mention uh, uh, our activity on protein and peptide amyloids, but as I said, we're very, uh, uh, we went through a very systematic, non-biased way to identify very short peptide fragment that can form a, a typical amyloids. Uh, the, the ability to uh, uh, identify the short amyloid forming motif actually uh, led to um, significant activities in drug uh, uh, development. We have um, uh, one drug that targets amyloid self assembly that uh, uh, completed a phase one clinical trials. Uh, for a AMD, age-related macular degeneration. Uh, we have another preclinical uh, project with uh, uh, Dexel Pharma, which I can disclose what was uh, appeared in the, in the press release. And we have uh, uh, other activities that are related to type 2 diabetes, ALS, and AD. Uh, later on, or in parallel, we identified even shorter uh, peptide fragment as short as dipeptide that can form ordered nanostructures. Once again, this was published already uh, 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 many years ago, but um, I would just like to give you the flavor about the advantage 
of a minimalistic approach, uh, the, uh, these dipeptide, diphenylalanine, which were identified uh, many years ago and formed a, a, a nanostructure, has unique physical properties, mechanical ones, as strong as, as steel, um, electronic one, optical one, all of this is very important for nanotechnology, which is a, a significant part of the things that we do. But um, recently, it, it is realized that all these phenomena that we identified easily, because we were using very simple model, uh, can uh, be observed in much larger uh, amyloids made of proteins and peptides, including so the optical properties, uh, as we saw with, uh, 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 with the uh, dipeptide structures many years ago, mechanical properties, and also the ability to form reactive uh, uh, oxygen species, which are involved both in the, uh, uh, um, in, in the pathology and mechanism of uh, formation of amyloid fibers that are made of proteins and peptides. So all this is an introduction to our approach of looking for very simple building blocks that can form ordered structures. So we, could, we demonstrated, we were the first to show that the pentapeptide can form ordered amyloid fibers, then that the dipeptide can form, a, a, can form a, a ordered assemblies that are not typical amyloid, but have share many property, physical properties as amyloid. And something that started as a control led us to a completely new concept, which is metabolite amyloids, amyloids that are not formed of proteins, peptides, but rather from uh, uh, small molecules. Uh, okay, so this is, this is a concept that uh, 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 I mentioned already, and now I move to uh, uh, as our transition from peptide self-assembly to the study of amino acid uh, amyloids. Uh, so, as I said, we move from proteins, polypeptides, to short peptides, dipeptides. We asked ourselves, can a single amino, aromatic amino acid, uh, we started with phenylalanine, but then we studied other amino acids, can form ordered structures? And the, the, the answer, as we envisioned uh, in the beginning, should have been not, because until four years ago, when I would ask how small you can get when we got to the dipeptide, was that it's probably a dipeptide, and, and I could give the very elaborate uh, 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 answer on the importance of the MI bond, the resonance between the, uh, um, uh, uh, in this uh, unique bond which gives it a, a pseudo or uh, partially two-dimensional uh, properties and allow the stacking and assembly of the structure. So it should have been not, but it's nice to do controls. So this is for the young uh, members of the audience, always do controls. And uh, quite a surprise, uh, this is uh, work that was uh, done by Lee adler Abramovich, who was then a PhD student in the lab. Now she has her own research group at the uh, 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 School of Medicine. Uh, Quite to our surprise, we, we realized that phenylalanine, a single amino acid, can form ordered assemblies that look just like amyloids, the amyloids that I mentioned earlier. These were fibrillar assemblies with a, a diameter similar to that of amyloids that could bind Congo red and show by refrigence, which is an amyloid... A, a, uh, specific amyloid properties, they could bind THT and show a, a clear fluorescence as, as we see with amyloids. So from the phenomenological point of view, we could see something that looks uh, from structure, ability to bind dye, just like amyloid. But, and also we could see clear electron diffraction pattern and we could model the formation of the structures uh, uh, just as, as it looks in, uh, in uh, protein and peptide amyloids that are involved in major neurodegenerative disorders. So then we ask ourselves, what could be the significance of uh, such uh, 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 
uh, of such uh, organization into amyloid. And then we suggested that it might be, as I started my talk, that indeed the self-assembly of phenylalanine into fibers uh, could suggest uh, uh, amyloid etiology in phenylketanuria, a metabolic uh, uh, disorder. And phenylketanuria, I guess that most of you are familiar with this uh, uh, disease. It's a res uh, recessive uh, uh, genetic inborn error of metabolism disorder. Uh, homozygous patients lack the two copies of the phenylalanine uh, uh, hydroxylase enzyme that converts phenylalanine into tyrosine. Unless treated with very strict diet, this patient cannot uh, consume any protein source, not meat, not dairy products, even uh, um, uh, 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 vegan food of uh, uh, high protein contact, uh, content they cannot eat. It's just a, a mixture of carbohydrates, fats, and uh, 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 19 amino acids. Unless they are treated with very severe diet, the concentration of phenylalanine, as I said, can give, reach over 1.2 uh, micromolar in uh, classical PKU and hundreds of micromolar in, in a mild PKU. Uh, if not treated, and each a newborn is, uh, uh, is screened for a, a PKU uh, because of the ability to, um, uh, to control the disease by diet. If they are not treated, uh, uh, it results in developmental and neurological abnormalities. Uh, and uh, um, so, we looked whether the formation of uh, uh, amyloid fibers is related not only to something that looks like amyloid, but also to something that could uh, act like amyloids in terms of toxicity. And indeed, if we go to concentration high enough, which is those concentrations that seen in classical PKU, we could see a, a, a cell toxicity we had a, a very a nice internal control to show that it's not just the concentration of the amino acids by using alanine, which does not form amyloid-like fibers, even at concentration as high as a, 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 a 10 or 15 a, a, a millimolar. Moreover, we could raise antibodies against these clusters, so antibodies could not be against phenylalanine, but they are, they are raised towards phenylalanine assemblies. Phenylalanine, of course, is a self. And we could use these antibodies to, uh, uh, to stain uh, 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 with electron microscopy uh, uh, these fibers and show that they bind to the fibers. And moreover, we could deplete the toxicity using these, uh, 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 these antibodies by... Uh, uh, interacting with the fibrillar assemblies. So we thought uh, that at this stage, and we wanted to publish it in, in a good journal, thought that at this stage we have something that looks like amyloid, it acts like amyloid, it, you can raise antibodies against it like you're raising antibodies, and you can deplete the toxicity. But we had tough referees, sometimes it's good to have tough referees, and they demanded to show it also in animal models. Quite luckily, there is a very simple animal model for a PKU. Uh, uh, in mice and, and human, it's just the same uh, metabolic pathway. So you can have uh, uh, heterozygous and homozygous mice. And we could see clearly at the homozygous mice that lack the two genes, that, uh, 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 the two copies that uh, uh, code for the enzyme, you could see the immunological response toward these fibers. The, it means that those mice were uh, um, exposed to the fibrillar assemblies. Uh, we thought that will be enough, so we had, but the referees were tough. We had a second uh, uh, round of uh, refereeing, which demanded then to, see, to show it also in human subject. Uh, quite luckily, uh, Lee was very uh, instrumental in finding a, a, a tissue bank in, uh, in the Netherlands, and we could get uh, uh, tissues from uh, uh, patients, deceased patients, 
who had the PKU, and we could see the staining the, with the antibodies and co-staining with the uh, Congo red. And this was the first demonstration of amyloid-like deposits in the case of PKU. We continue also to study it at a, a, a higher resolution uh, structural studies using X-ray crystallography. And then this is the crystal structure of phenylalanine in uh, its vita ionic form when it is uh, 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 under the condition in which it forms the, the, the fibers. And if you remember your uh, uh, first or second year biochemistry, beta sheet structure is this, like a zigzag form in which you have the, uh, um, the amino acid uh, arranged uh, like this uh, along the, uh, uh, the long path, uh, uh, the, along the, uh, uh, the axis of the beta strand. And if you look at it, I, I, I believe that we see something that is like a supramolecular, that means it doesn't have covalent bond, supramolecular beta strand. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is like a beta sheet, but without any, uh, uh, any uh, uh, covalent bond. And, and this is also a new concept that we brought to the scientific community. Indeed, now, if you just overlap a hypothetical, uh, a hypothetical beta strand, a, a polyphenylalanine beta strand on top of the crystal structure, you see near perfect uh, uh, superposition of the two structure. The advantage of working on a very simple model, so everybody can buy phenylalanine from Sigma Aldrich or any other uh, uh, source and form the amyloid and study their effect is the fact that there are many groups working on it now. People have shown that you can inhibit the formation of the structures by a stereoisomer of phenylalanine or by small molecules. Uh, other people are working, we and other people are working on the mechanism of this. So now we, I think that we, we changed uh, many of the, uh, of the thinking about uh, uh, PKU and the uh, uh, aggregation of metabolites into ordered structures. But we ask ourselves whether this is the only case. Is, is phenylalanine uh, uh, is just uh, uh, one outlier or, or example, or you could see it in many other metabolic disorders. As I, I started uh, uh, my presentation, there are many cases we have so many, uh, 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 so many enzymatic reactions in the metabolic pathway. And we study uh, systematically all the different metabolites that uh, uh, are found in different uh, inborn neuron metabolism disorder. This is work, a PhD work of uh, uh, Shira Shacham. And, and our concept was that it might be that just as phenylalanine, we have the aggregation of other metabolites into ordered structures. Uh, and uh, uh, sure, I did a very uh, extensive work and actually identified additional five metabolites uh, in addition to phenylalanine that can form all the structure. Adenine, orotic acid, cysteine, tyrosine, uracil. In all these cases, we could see, it's cut in the top. We could see fibrillar assembly as, as, as studied by electron microscopy, binding to THT, binding to Congo red. So all the properties that we see with peptide am and protein amyloids, we could see with these very simple uh, 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 structures. We study also the toxicity. It's just as with the phenylalanine, we could see toxicity with all the additional five uh, 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 metabolite structures. And again, we are using the, the, the very uh, 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 convenient uh, an, a, a convenient control, which is an, a, a alanine, which does not form any structures. Uh, and not only that it formed, a, a, that it is toxic, it is toxic by a mechanism of apoptosis. So we could see that just like we see with the protein and peptide amyloid, also here we see apoptotic cell death. So we have the structure, the function, the toxicity, the mechanism of toxicity for now six are, and there are more in the pipeline. And again, with alanine, you don't see any significant apoptotic effect. So if you think about 
the different properties of amyloid. And this is nanoscale fibers, THT binding, Congo red binding, cytotoxicity, apoptotic cell death, membrane binding. This was not done by us, by other groups. This is the advantage of working on very simple models, so other work. Uh, uh, the ability to inhibit by uh, uh, agent that inhibit uh, 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 amyloids and uh, the formation of clusters studied by mass spectrometry. We see all the properties that we see with protein and peptide amyloids with the uh, uh, metabolite amyloids. And I uh, uh, think that uh, we are changing now. The, uh, 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 we're providing a new paradigm for uh, uh, metabolic disorders. In the past, it was uh, explained as a way that imbalance between different structure, uh, uh, the, the effect on, on the amino acid and nucleotide uh, uh, import and export. I think that we have now a, 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 a new model that could uh, uh, explain many of the mysteries about the inborn error of metabolism. I'm, I don't have the time to go into it, but things like maternal PKU, which is like a mystery. And I think that if we think now about PKU and other metabolic disorder as amyloid-like structure, now things like maternal PKU could be understood, and uh, we are trying to, to push this forward. So, just to summarize, uh, 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 amyloid uh, uh, assemblies are self-assembled uh, structures involved in degenerative disorder, very short peptide, amino acid, and even a, a, a nucleobase that can self-assemble into, into amyloid-like assemblies. The assemblies show like amyloid-like toxicity, apoptotic effect, beta sheet like structure binding to typical amyloid dyes. And luckily, we have also other groups, and the entry level is low to have a, a, a show the mechanism of cluster formation, membrane binding, and way to inhibit. And we offer a new paradigm for inborn error of metabolism disorders. Uh, as related to all the things that we do in the lab, I think that Leonardo da Vinci said it many years before us, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication, and we try to make a simple model as, as we can. Uh, this and other things that we do in the lab are, of course, uh, uh, work of many talented students. Uh, some of them are already uh, faculty members in different institutes. And uh, I moved fast, so if somebody wants to look for the original papers, you can find it on my website. Thank you.